Morning ladies and gents, thanks for tuning in. In this video we're going to troll for squid. So this is a technique not commonly used by many people. Uh, it's hugely effective, I love it. It's fantastic, particularly in the summer months. And the reason behind that is because we get to cover a hell of a lot of ground by doing it. We get to troll all the weed bank areas. I prefer to do it on low tide when all those squid come off the weed banks into the main channels. So uh, all your islands, so I'm in Morton Bay at the moment, so any islands, Peel Island, all the way up through to Mud Island, uh, Morton, and then basically any of your main channels, so Rainbow Channel, Rouse Channels, um, they're the areas we want to be trolling along the edges of. So, and we'll run it, the squid jigs at different depths and I'll show you how to do that and uh, hopefully we find a few. It's, um, it's fun, it's, it's great to do. As I said, we get to travel over a lot of area, cover a lot of ground and hopefully we find those squid. Um, see how we go, fingers crossed, we get a few today. Squid can be found on a variety of bottom structures consisting of rocks, reefs, with a favourite being the weed banks, which is home to a large variety of small crustaceans and fish which the squid love to eat. When trolling for squid, you can target two main areas. One is the weed bank flats that cover large areas, particularly on the high tides. Unfortunately, due to the sheer size of these areas, it can take a considerable amount of time to troll these areas in hope of finding a squid that is spread out through these banks. To speed this process up, trolling squid jigs along the edge of the weed banks at low tide gives you a huge advantage as a lot of the squid will move off the flats and into the edge of the weed and sand banks throughout the deeper channels. These areas are perfect for trolling squid jigs and can save you a significant amount of time and the rewards can be fantastic. Alright, so the first rig I'm going to put out is basically a double pattern oster with two squid jigs. So I have a fairly heavy squid jig on the bottom. So you can see there's a fairly light sinker attached to the bottom of the Paternoster rig and that's just to drag it down a little bit deeper particularly when we've got two squid jigs on there. there's a bit of resistance there it'll tend to raise the whole rig up so a little bit of weight and I can change that according to obviously the depth and also the current that I've got happening at the time so we'll see how that goes whether that's enough I'm not sure so essentially we're going to go as slow as possible um, we want the airport just in gear and you've got to take into consideration sometimes the actual current as well. So whether you're going into the current or going with the current, that will affect the depths that your squid jig sit at. So if we were going into the current, there's a good chance your squid jig will have more resistance and raise up a little higher. So we often need to go a little bit heavier with the squid jig or we add more weight if we're using a pattern oster rig. And then you can see the top of that rod with the pattern also rig, it's just occasionally you can tell it's bouncing across the bottom, that's perfect. So we don't want to be doing it all the time, but we know that it's very close to the bottom. And we've got patches of weed all through here and that's what it's bouncing off the top of those patches of weed. So every so often I'm just going to pull the squid jig in, always making sure that it's clean of debris because squid jigs with any form of weed on it, the squid will not touch it, they're very picky with it. So it pays. Obviously while you're trolling you get a lot of debris on top of the surface that will float and get, hit your line and actually works the way down the line onto your squid jig. So and that's another benefit of running the pattern oster rig. Because it runs down the pattern oster rig, it'll either hit where the pattern oster knot is and actually misses the squid jig itself. So it keeps the squid jig nice and clean. It does run all the way down the bottom, it'll actually get caught up on the sinker, not so much on your squid jig. So just so I was cleaning the pattern oster rig, it had a little bit of weed on the bottom of the sinker and then one a little, little bit on one of the jigs, so as I was letting it back out, this tiny little arrow squid's grabbed it. Very small little fella, but that is an ideal bait and I'll be keeping him. He's perfect size, not, not an eater, that's for sure. But, um, keep going, hopefully we get some bigger ones. Oh. There we go, we got a nice squid on. Done the pattern oster rig, that one. Steer us away, because the wind's going to blow us onto the bank. Thank you. 
boat and gear out into the deeper water in the channel. take too long at all so I've got that arrow squid first up. I've just come back along the weed bank and, and hooked up to this one. I don't think it's a big big one but um, pulled a bit of drag and you can see it obviously pulling pretty hard on the rod tip there. You want a fairly light drag, you don't want to run a heavy drag because you'll just pull those prongs clean out of the squid. Beautiful squid. Not a bad size one, not a huge one. Just a lovely size eating fish. Just taking the bottom squid jig. So that's a shore catch squid jig. It's hooked quite well. Just enough drag to penetrate those prongs straight into him. He wasn't coming off. It's a beautiful example of a uh, tiger squid, that one. We go and to dispatch that what I'm going to do is just put him on the top of the gunnel here and we're just going to give him a quick hit behind the back of the head and that dispatches them straight away. You'll notice it changed colour instantly. He's gone all limp as well. That's the end of him. You probably just see it in the rod tip there now. Every now and then it's bouncing. That's just bouncing across those little clumps of weed that are throughout this area on the edge of the channel. As you've seen straight away, it's quite effective. It's easy fishing and I'm covering a lot of ground. So I'm covering a whole length of the bank here and I'll just continue up through the channels, each side of the channels. So the rainbow, the rouse, uh, up along Morton fit quite a lot so I like to do the channels during the low tide because obviously the squid aren't up high in the banks um, it's a lot more area for them to be it's a lot harder to find them so the water runs off the banks you can concentrate along the edges where they're going to be as the tide progresses up further I'll probably go up Morton possibly Peel any of the islands so um, you know from mud all the way down to Peel goat they're, they're ideal areas particularly around the high tides. And uh, it's not just the weed banks you can fish. You can go around the actual edge of the reef lines, so any of the reef lines around the islands, and you control the squid jigs around the edge of the reef lines where those coral are. And, then, and that's obviously a, a area where you will get a lot of squid that people don't often target. If you've got kids, it's actually not a bad thing for them because they don't want to sit there casting squid jigs for hours on end. So you can just throw them the rod holders, Troll around and hopefully get one. And it's just easy fishing. Wow. Look at the size of that squid. That is dead set smaller than the bloody squid jig. I'll just steer away from the bank of it here. That is insane. Look at the size of that. It is smaller than the squid jig. That is crazy. I'll tell you what. There we go, the size of that. I'm going to let him go. He deserves to be let go, that one, I reckon. Grow bigger another day. Here you go, buddy. Crazy. I reckon that is the smallest squid I've ever caught. Been a fair while between squid, unfortunately. It's um, they're certainly not around in numbers. I've spoken to some guys that have been trying all day in the usual squid areas, and they haven't seen any. So it's um, very slow. I'm just going to continue to troll these weed banks, 
I'm, I've come up over towards the bottom of Morton now, so I've, I've done the Rainbow Channel, the Rouse Channel, and uh, I've worked my way over to Morton. A lot cleaner water here, but there's just none around in numbers at all, so we'll see how we go. I'll persevere with it. As I said, this technique of, of trolling for them, you cover a lot of ground, you're more inclined to come across them than sitting in one particular spot all day long. No doubt if I keep working these areas, I will get a few, but um, there's certainly not going to be any numbers, and I don't think they're going to be any size either. There'll be a lot of little fish around, a little squid. That's smashed up by fish before. Um, it was crazy, pulling up squid jigs that have been broken in half, and bits missing off them. I end up uh, throwing some lures out and having a bit of fun, so that was um, that was cool actually, because they turned out to be Taylor and, and Big Eye Trevally. Um, yeah, that was a cool little session. Not what I was after, but I made the most of it. It was it was good. So I'll show you a little bit of that footage as well. I was wondering what was smashing these squid jigs. Have a look at that. Actually, smash them in half, taking the ends off them. It's going to end up a bit of a costly day if that continues, but. Um, I thought I'd throw a little hard body out and nail it straight away. Not bad eating if you uh, eat them fresh like that, bleed them. But he will more than likely stay on board as a mackerel bait. Keep him whole. Perfect size. Hey guys, little big eyed Trevally. Inside Morton Bay. It's on a Venom V swim. Very cool. I don't see a great deal of these in Morton Bay. Oh, we got one on. It's the furthest one back. It was one of the lightest ones. Pretty shallow, so we're about two meters of water. Too straight onto the line without a sinker, no pattern rig. Not a big one, but hey, it's a squid. It's been a while between squids. No huge one, but um, hey, good size bait, but bloody delicious too. So he'll be coming home. That makes a nice little calamari rings. So I've still got one pattern oster rig on with two squid jigs. So we just bounce along off the bottom. We're in about two meters of water, two and a half meters of water here. Push it into the wind, so that slows the boat right up and allows the squid jigs to sink down. Um, so I've gone to just running squid jigs without any extra weight on them. Did slightly different colours and weights. And uh, the, the furthest one out the back's just got hit. And it's more of a natural colour. During the middle of the day I prefer probably more of a, a brownie or even a light pink sort of colour. Um, even greys, they go quite well during the middle of the day. Morning and afternoons do probably find that the brighter colours work better. but. It's a hard one. You think you've got it worked out and it'll completely change. So just a matter of having different colours out and seeing what works the best for the, on the day. Squid would have to be one of the most fascinating creatures of the ocean. With over 300 species of squid found all around the world, they have an amazing ability to instantly change colours to suit their surrounds and mood. Whilst they can be shy and flighty, they can also be very curious and follow squid jigs for a considerable length of time before grabbing it or showing away. When hooked, they will expel a thick cloud of ink, and this defense mechanism is used to block the view of predators and allow enough time to get away. Due to their short lifespan, squid may only reproduce once or twice in their lifetime, and have a unique way of mating which I'll film one day whilst pulling in a squid I'd caught. A female squid had taken the jig, and I noticed another one following it as I pulled it in. The male squid took this opportunity to move in, and with precision-like movement, rotated upside down and quickly delivered a package of sperm underneath the female's mantle next to her overduct. Then when the female lays her eggs, they brush past the sperm which completes the fertilisation process. It's an amazing procedure and to capture footage of this was extremely lucky and something I'll never forget. A little 
fella on here. No big ones, but no um, squids are squid at the moment. Come back to the Rainbow Channel. The tide's just starting to slow up, which will help. Had a fair bit of run out tide, so I'll start to run back out. little fella. It's on the duo D squid. 21 grams, quite heavy. Does a beautiful job for trolling. Really, really good lure for that. Quite heavy, so they're a deep water squid lure, but um, perfect for trolling. It's a uh, bit of a fish finger size, that one. Not very big at all. Just can't find any big ones from the bay at the moment. That's the way it is. They come and go. He's going to make a good bait. Turn that into a big red emperor or a big snapper. I'm sure it'll convert something quite nice. With the Paternosa rig, still got two squid jigs, different colours. And I'm just running the one off this rod. And that's a duo, so that's quite a heavy squid jig that they're a deep water jig which is ideal for trolling and that's why I'm using it generally wouldn't want to use that just because of the weight of it it's 21 grams it's quite heavy but they troll really well just by themselves not real good on a pattern oster rig because they, they tend to face down that with the, the toe point and this ends up getting caught back in your main line so troll them by themselves and they work extremely well Extremely sharp too. It's a fair way behind. And you want to let it out slow too. If you cast out and you want to let a little bit more line out, don't just free spool it because what will just straight away it'll drop to the uh, weed bed and get caught up. You just slowly let it a little bit more out. green in their eyes. Absolutely stunning that is. They're a very cool looking creature. He'll make a few nice calamari rings. Keep chipping away and hopefully we can get a few more. Hopefully we can stumble across a bigger one amongst somewhere too. Also be aware if you're in the Rainbow Channel there's quite a lot of green zones. So there's one towards Amity Point it runs up the channel a fair way, so you've got to be real careful. Some of those weed banks are all amongst that. So you've got to make sure you stop before you get to it. It will come out the outside of it. And it's unfortunately right where it drops away into the deeper water. Same back towards my aura as well. And then the opposite side of Amity, uh, where the big sand banks, etc. are. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of weed bed through there. There's probably no need to be on that area unless you're there for a day trip with the family. to the duo. She's a small little squid. Unbelievable. Better than nothing but color seems to be working quite well at the moment. The sun's gone away and 
like I said, I prefer the, the brighter colours when there's cloud coverage, darker. Early morning, late afternoon, just before dark. Another little fish finger size one. Size of Wow. That squid there would probably only be trying to bite me. That squid there is probably only a few months old, so a lot of these squid only grow. See his beak in there trying to get me. Look at that. Open his beak right up, trying to reach around to get me. Gotta be careful when they do put a fair bite on you. Those jaws are quite big and nasty. Pretty cool. Really in there. Yeah, he's probably only uh, maybe three months old, if that. Two months old. So these tiger squid only grow around one to two years old. Some of the other squid species grow a little bit older, three or four years old. They generally have a very small lifespan, very short. Another small one. Another one on the duo. Green colour again. A bit of a whittle. As long as it's not ink, I don't care. Another, another smallish fish, but um, not too much. Great bait. Well, they're great eating size no matter what. But that's an exceptional bait as well. So if I catch a few more, or I don't feel like eating them, I can certainly use them for bait and turn into something nice and delicious. They're all the same size. I highly doubt they'll actually find a big one, unfortunately. Yep, we're on. Got our holes, grab him. Okay. Yep, you're up. Still going? Slowly wind him in, slowly. Day two, I've come back out. I've got my daughter Holly with me. She's trying to come out for a bit of a fish and squid, so we've had a great morning. Put some nice flathead, a heap of tailor. Yeah, holes. Well done. Thank you. Cracking fish. On the new Venom V Swim. V Swim 90, that one. Beautiful fish. That's a better one. That's a better one, huh? Well done. These are, I think this was an unweighted one, so we're only in about a metre and a half, two metres. Decent size. I think it's probably the better one we've been looking for. It's not huge. size squid that one. That's what we're looking for. That's on a green short catch one. So that's one of the heavier ones. So he's getting down a little bit deeper. Perfect patrolling. Nice squid. Hey, well done. Thank you. That's awesome. He's a much nicer size one that one. Such a cool looking animal. Beautiful green on that eye. Oh. It's unreal. Unfortunately, the weather's blown up. Um, we got the morning session in with the daughter. She caught some cool Taylor flathead, um, some little trevally. We did get one more squid at the bottom of Morton before we went for a swim, uh, trolling through there, so that was cool. That added to the tally of 10. So I got nine yesterday. Caught some smaller ones as well that'll let go, but that's a great feed. They're not big squid. They're only that sort of small to mediums, but um, they'll be nice to eat. And uh, just proves how effective it is, you know? Like I've done it during the po toughest possible time you can go out squidding. 
and we've caught squid. I do know people are out there yesterday that were uh, anchored up and also drifting areas and they didn't get any. So that's, um, I reckon that's a testament to how effective the trolling for them can be. You know, we're covering big areas. We're, we're travelling all over the place, trolling around, um, and we, we got a nice feed of them. So that's cool. As you've seen, squid jigs, you know, a variety of them, different weights, colours, brands. Um, you know, we, we got Yamashita, uh, we had Shore Catch, we got Duos, there's some other Japanese ones there I got as well. It's all about the weights. So when you're trolling for squid, it's more about getting them, you know, within a half a metre from the bottom. If a squid sees it, it's going to commit and come over and grab it. So a lot of your brands, styles, weights, whatever it might be, colours, it doesn't make a huge difference at times when you're trolling. So just to keep that in mind. Although I would recommend the duos. So that's a duo D squid, 95 mil, that's 21 grams. So that's heavy, even your 3.5 inch squid jigs that you can buy from any brand, they're only about 19 grams. They've got the feathers on the cheeks as well with the other brands, these don't. So a lot more streamlined and the toe point being up top like that, it actually pulls down further in the water column. So great for trolling, really, really good. Uh, I would highly recommend them. They're good for about two meters to four meters. No weight needed to be added to it. Whereas some of the other ones, you know, you're gonna add weight like that to it. And obviously, as I showed earlier with the um, Paternoster rig as well. So you don't need to do that with some of those heavier jigs. If you're in that sort of one to 1.5 meters, just your, your size three uh, squid jig works quite well. It'll bring it down within that sort of 0.5. If you can slowly troll along, and obviously you need to vary that a little bit depending on your current as well. So if you've got strong current, you might need to add a little bit of extra weight to it. Rods, I use blade and tails, seven foot, just a nice long soft action to them. Um, gives a little bit of give when obviously those squid pulsate uh, when you hook up to them. Light drags, don't run a heavy drag and uh, just enough to sink those prongs into those tentacles of the squid. Um, light line, I prefer to use light line, so six pound, a 10 pound line, just less resistance through the water for trolling. Uh, if you have to run heavier line, that's fine, just add a little bit extra weight to the squid jigs. But uh, we'll go clean this squid up now. Been on a nice ice floor, it's nice and cold. We'll take the heads off these and uh, put the tubes inside a nice tumbler bag. So that's a Wilson Scaler tumbler bag. So um, we'll, we'll throw the squid into that. Tie it behind the boat, it'll clean them up nicely. You'll probably still have to do a little bit of cleaning with your home, but uh, I'll show you that when we get there. And I'm also going to show you a beautiful salt and pepper calamari recipe. My wife makes this beautiful, and uh, hopefully you guys love it too. So I'll see you at home. Back at home, the tumbler bag did a reasonable job of cleaning the squid tubes. Uh, as I mentioned, you'll still do a little bit of cleaning, so it'll leave the wing parts of the squid tubes on there, um, but the insides come out pretty good. Uh, occasionally, you'll still get a bit of the backbone left, etc. Um, but insides are pretty good. As I said, you've just got to peel those wing parts of it off. Uh, but other than that, it's done a pretty good job of it. You can help it by cutting the ends of the tubes when you put them into the tumbler bags as well, uh, so that does help clean them quite quickly. I probably tumbled them for about five minutes, if not less, so not a real long time to get them that clean, but I'll clean the rest of this up, chop them up, I'll show you how to cook them. Just get your thumb down behind the wings like that, and then just go down the body. And you'll peel it off. Make sure you get all that membrane off it, because that's what makes them tough. All right, so we get the squid tube, and you'll see that there's the top part of the squid tube with a bit of a line down it, basically like a seam. What we're gonna do is put the knife inside it. We wanna put a cut directly down that seam, just like that. Now you will see that the inside of a squid tube also has a membrane in it, 
we need to try and move that as much as possible. It is very difficult at times, but if you can scrape a lot of that away, a lot of the chewiness and toughness that comes from eating squid is from the inside membrane. So try and remove as much as that as possible. Now that our squid tube's nice and clean, we're just gonna trim it up a little bit and get rid of any of the spots that might have a bit of that membrane left on it, which is usually the end parts of the squid tube. So what we do is take a very small skinny strip off that end and same as the very end of it here. So that can be a little bit tough, that end. Now what we're gonna do is actually put little slits all through the squid tube itself, uh, both ways, and that just basically tenderizes it. So if there's any membrane left on it, that will cut through it, so when you go to eat it, you're not going to feel that chewiness to it. Just lightly go over the very, very outer part of the squid tube, just to cut through that membrane. Back the other way. And then same on the other side. Have it you can see the, the cuts through it still intact and then basically what we want to do is just cut them into portions they're squares we're not doing squid tubes obviously and then we'll coat them fry them up all right for this simple salt and pepper squid recipe we're going to put one cup of plain flour one tablespoon of black pepper, one tablespoon of salt, and we'll actually stir that up. Then we'll get one egg, we'll crack that, whisk it up, and we're gonna put a little bit of garlic into it. And then what we're gonna do is get the squid, we're gonna wash the squid uh, in amongst the egg and the garlic, and then we're gonna put it into the mixture of flour, salt, and pepper, and then we're gonna fry it. So it's quite a simple one. And we'll show you guys how it's done. All right, so we're just gonna get a little bit of garlic. It's not too much. I'm going to whisk it into the egg. A cup of flour. And we want a tablespoon of pepper. A tablespoon of salt. And we mix it all together. If you like it nice and peppery, obviously you can put a little bit more pepper in. Another half a tablespoon, if not more. And then we get our squid, wash it in the egg wash, and then put it into the flour. There we go. I've right, just heated up some vegetable oil. Uh, just to, to know that the temperature is right, just get a, a wooden spoon and dip it in. And if it bubbles up around the wood like that, you know the temperature is correct and you need to throw your squid in. All right, so we're gonna throw about five pieces in the pot at a time. You don't want to put more than that because it'll cool the oil down too quickly and then it won't cook properly. So I'm going to put about 45 seconds. So wait about 45 seconds and then we're going to flip them over. All right, so after 45 seconds or thereabouts on each side, take them out and let them drain off a little bit of paper towel to get the excess oil off them. It's as simple as that. So that's the finished product, guys. Nice, subtle flavour, salt and pepper calamari. Not too peppery. If you do like a lot of pepper, then obviously that'll be extra to it. But uh, it's just a nice, subtle flavour to it. Nice sauce to go with it is a nice mix of uh, sweet chilli sauce and mayonnaise. Half, half. That's delicious to go with it as well. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. You learned a lot from it. Uh, trolling for squid is really rewarding. Uh, it does work. So get out there and have a crack yourself. Until next time, tight lines.